So these are miniature accent walls I made live on my channel here. And I'm going to show you how you can do this rusty one yourself with found objects you might have already lying around like I did. No to that, no mesh. The clock tower. Is the stained glass dem uh, test prints. There we go. So this is a uh, thick matting paper or stock, whatever you call it. This stuff's cool. I'll probably use this for flooring in a sci-fi dio someday. Okay, some of this uh, needlepoint material I might use. We'll see what comes to mind. Okay, if I can carry all this without dropping it, then that'll be great. Hey, all right. As you can probably tell, I'm a bit of a hoarder of parts and bits and bobs and greeblies and random things that have interesting textural elements and shapes and all kinds of stuff. I typically refer to it as obtainium since it's things that I have obtained over a period of time to use as elements later. I'm sure you're resourceful enough to find all kinds of interesting parts and bits and bobs and obtainium yourself for your piece because really what I'm about to show you is how to layer things in such a manner as to get the desired finished effect. Really, you could use any type of textural elements as long as they can securely glue onto one another and you can cut them and shape them to your liking to fit this piece. I started with a 11 by 14 by quarter inch thick piece of MDF board or medium density fiber board, also known as chipboard in the hobby world. It's a wood based product. Uh, it's not solid wood, but it's basically wood chips pressed together. It glues excellent with wood glue and paper and cardboard glue really well to it with wood glue, as you see me using here. This is Tight Bond 3. It's my favorite wood glue. I used to use Tight Bond 2 but I noticed it just wasn't getting as strong of a bond with some smaller objects. It probably works better with larger, heavier objects, but this works great with small stuff. I laid down this piece of corrugated sheet uh, first because I thought it looked nice as sort of a wainscot piece. I weighted it down with a piece of walnut and two one, two, three blocks and got out a sheet of eighth inch thick expanded styrene board, or you could get soft PVC sheet. They kind of act the same way. It can be cut with an extendable box cutter and a metal ruler. Be careful. I love this stuff. It's very bendy. It can be heat formed and it glues in place really, really easily with super glue as well as EPS glue, which is what I'm about to use here. EPS stands for expanded polystyrene glue. I love to buy Styro Goo. There's a link below if you want to get some. I don't get anything for it. I just love Hotwire Foam Factory, who makes really, really cool glues and tools for working with foam. This is me digging back into more of my Obtainium collection. As you can see, I save all kinds of weird things, giant springs, nail uh, pins for nail guns and pin nailers, random electronic parts, uh, all kinds of metal things, nuts, bolts, washers, locking, C-clamps, grips, all kinds of stuff, nails washers. I love stuff like this. I used to love walking around thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales growing up and now as an adult to find interesting things. And now I save them. I have an excuse to finally save them and use them on interesting projects for people like you. I found a couple of main feature pieces that I liked, those metal things that kind of look like shelves to me and decided to do some layout lines with my speed square there to kind of make sure I knew where the middle of my layout was and just draw some reference lines that I could abut things up to to make sure I kept my lines perpendicular and parallel and things weren't sitting at weird angles when I was done. To glue these on, I got that Bob Smith Industries two-part epoxy that hardens up in five minutes. I love this stuff. I just used a toothpick on a piece of cardboard and mixed it 50-50, smeared it all over the piece, and then stuck them down carefully using my reference lines that I sketched onto the board so that I didn't get lost. And I flipped one up and one down just to kind of create an interesting sense of yin and yang and balance across the piece and to create some interest. I used the needlepoint grid to create some interesting shapes that I thought looked good. And then I traced those where I wanted those so that I could keep track of where they were going. 
and then I chose to use some yellow frog tape and masked off everything except where I wanted glue because we're about to use spray glue and I do not want spray glue all over the places that I do not want spray glue. <laughs> so uh, I went ahead and masked everything off that I did not draw my little reference lines on. I spray glued with Gorilla Spray Glue the back of the needle point board and then I spray glued the board uh, where the needle point board was supposed to go. That's a lot of repeated words there. And then I peeled off the masking tape right after I sprayed it. By the time I was done peeling off the masking tape, it was tacky enough to place the two pieces together. This is what you're supposed to do here. Spray both sides, let it get tacky, and then push it into place, and then it will not come up as you saw. It's very, very, very strong bond if you do it correctly. If you join them too quickly, uh, the bond won't be as strong. It might peel off, and if you wait too long, they won't stick at all. So it takes a little bit of practice to find that pocket of time there. If it's a warm day, you really only need about 30 seconds to a minute to let them get tacky. Then, after I got my main features laid out, I started going nuts with all the other parts that I had picked out, all the little obtainium pieces, and started shaping interesting things that I thought looked good to create some positive and negative space and abut different textural elements against each other, and shape them with scissors and an extendable box cutter, just to my liking. This is where we kind of play and create something that's interesting to us. Create something that's visually interesting to you and makes sense. And what I also try to do is keep the layers of texture not too far off from one another um, so that we had interesting layers and levels of texture going on, but they weren't extruding so far off the piece that they stood out or I couldn't consistently paint them with some of the methods I'm going to use later. As you can see, I dug through some more scraps that I had lying around to find some more interesting pieces, cut some paper, cut some poster board, cut some sheet styrene, and just kept going with this process until I was happy with it. The glue in that clear bottle is EPS glue or expanded polystyrene glue. It is an amazing glue. It kind of glues everything to everything. I use it for not just gluing styrene or plastic or foam together, of which it is the best glue for expanded foams and styrofoams and hard foams. But it works for all kinds of things, even metal to foam, plastic to foam, wood to wood. It works for a lot of things. You can see me using super glue there to glue styrene onto the MDF and laying down super glue into a tracing I did of where that little styrene piece went so that it didn't bleed outside of the edges. That's just a little trick I do so that it gets a nice strong bond, but I don't have super glue smearing all over the place. After I got everything where I wanted, I went ahead and laid out all the other little bits and bobs and extrusions and protrusions where I thought it made sense to put them. These are the nuts, the bolts, the washers, the little locking clips and things that I pulled out of my hardware boxes. And uh, this is the part where you kind of zone out, have fun, put on some Enya, and uh, just enjoy, uh, enjoy making stuff. So find whatever you have. It doesn't have to be nuts or bolts or washers. It can be any kind of repeating little parts or shapes that kind of echo a theme. A bunch of little round things, a bunch of little bulbous things, a bunch of little hexagon shaped things, a bunch of little square things. Anything that can carry some somewhat of a theme across for fasteners or fittings is a great, great way to approach this. After I was satisfied with the layout, I let it dry overnight and then put two coats of flat black primer on the entire piece, which made it look like this. There's some additional sort of tubing and conduit piping details you can see there. I forgot to get that on camera, but that's basically just wire that I bent with some pliers and super glued in place where I thought it looked interesting. The next step here is to add color. I use this dark brown spray by Rust-Oleum. It's actually Espresso is the name of the color, but really any dark brown that you like will work for this. I'm adding additional color to the shadows. The black is obviously the darkest color we've added to the piece and we're going to add, but adding brown at an upward angle in the areas that would have the most shadow and in the areas that you want to be darker or richer uh, is a cool technique to create shadow and lighting in a piece. Now I'm using this red, which is a colonial red by Rust-Oleum. It's sort of a darker, rich red, but you can use any 
red color that you like just don't don't go to a brighter red go to a medium or dark red for this step and this is sort of your main color we're going to have our main color as red and this is where i'm spraying at sort of a down angle from the top and straight on so that the lack of overspray on the underside of some of the objects that stick out from the piece create a shadow where more brown and more black is left where the red didn't touch. So I'm using that to create more lighting in the piece. I hope that makes sense. Uh, it should come across in the finished look of the piece. These are two oranges that I like and I realized I had the caps on the wrong cans. So after switching those, uh, we got, <laughs> we picked one that we liked as our highlight color and started spraying in areas that I thought should have um, a brighter tone to them that were out of shadow or areas I wanted to highlight that were higher off of the piece or areas I thought I wanted to draw your eye to uh, centers of mass uh, in positive space and things like that that naturally occurred after I did all my textural and obtainium pieces all glued down this is just a personal thing that you're going to do I took this chip brush and I did some swiping down right after I finished that orange layer of paint what this does is this takes the circular and oval shaped blobs and, and splotches that occur in spray paint and when you drag them down with a dry brush like this it swipes them down and creates little sort of microscopic and feathered streaks. It's kind of hard to see on camera at the moment but what it does is it makes it almost look like humidity has built up upon the piece and then run downwards over time and created a downward momentum in the rust it just makes it look more atmospherically correct it, it makes it look less like it was just spray painted and more like it's developed rust in a real environment it's just a little trick i figured out that i think looks great that i like to do I grabbed some bright orange acrylics and this spiced berry as a dark highlight or mid light or shadow color and some silver metallic Rust-Oleum spray paint to do one of our final steps here to highlight things. I took that spiced berry color and mixed it onto a flat brush. Uh, not fully dry brush technique here, but just a, a light color amount on the brush, a light amount of paint on the brush. And I went around with intention into a lot of the shadow areas and darker areas and created sort of a drip lines and drip effects and rust effects uh, that had a downward motion like dripping but with this color in the shadow layers. Then I came back with this bright orange mixed with nutmeg which is a medium brown to create a medium bright layer of rust on top of those same areas um, and create patches that look like it was growing outward almost like mold. I think sometimes when you look at rust forming on things especially if it's been there for a long time it almost looks like a colony of mold. So I went around creating sort of little rust colonies with that brown and orange mixture, letting it randomly lay itself down. And you can see the difference from one side to the other. Uh, the right side has got that orange highlight. The left side has got is without it. And it makes a big difference. You can see there how it looks. And obviously, you can decide if you want to go this far or not with your piece. I went ahead and went around the whole piece and did those sort of rust colonies, like mold colonies, if you will. And then I went with a flat brush again and did my swiping technique, as you see me doing here, like I did before, to make it look like streaks of moisture had accumulated and dried in different areas over time. I went back again with just bright, bright orange, and I went to some of the highest areas and did some dry brushing, some down swiping, some little streaks of things, just to create some more interest in the piece. This is all about layering color to create the... Uh, illusion of weathering over time at different temperatures, different humidities, different mineralizations, and things like that. This last little trick is I sprayed that Rust-Oleum spray paint into a puddle on this piece of cardboard, and then I basically used a tiny brush I didn't mind ruining, because you're going to probably ruin it with the spray paint, and used a basic dry brushing technique uh, to highlight different areas that might uh, show bare metal still, uh, just to give the illusion this was all once the same metal color and doing little scratches and dings and dents and areas where I thought it laid on a little bit too thick or I could see brush strokes in the silver, I just took my finger and rubbed it. Right before it had a chance to dry, I just rubbed it and it kind of creates this smeared um, natural metal look in there that eliminates some of the weird sharp edges and blotches you get if you just kind of painted it a little bit too quick. It just smears it around and makes it look like um, 
sort of burnished metal or like the metal is fading into rust. I love it. Uh, all, these are all my little variations of these techniques I developed um, fiddling around over the years. I hope you like it. Um, this last little step, you can skip this if you like. I just like it because I think it adds richness to the whole piece. We did all those highlights. Now we're going to come back and do kind of a low light or a shadow with this black wash. I just took mostly water with a little bit of black acrylic paint, mixed it up, and I spread it over the entire piece. And you might think, oh no, you're ruining it. But if you thin the water out enough and then you uh, lift it up, and wipe it down here with a paper towel. I just dab up the dense areas of water that I don't like and wipe downwards so that I create streaks, black streaks and water streaks or moisture streaks. It really just adds a rich sort of flavor, if you will, to the piece. It almost makes it look like rusty barbecue sauce. <laughs> I don't know. That's just the word that came to mind. But I think that that's how it turns out. It almost looks like um, like a, a, something that's been underwater, like a rusty submarine that got lifted out of the water and rusted on the beach or something like that. Obviously, this could work for science fiction. This could work for military rust. This could work for a battlefield. This could work for used future. I love this look, and I hope you like it too. And I hope you try all these techniques with your own found objects and obtainium that you have at home. If you are at all interested in learning how to do any of these other accent walls I created live here on the channel in my series called Art in Real Time, where I literally do art in real time to show you how long it takes, I have a further more detailed commentary on what you just saw in that series and these other walls you can learn how to make. So I hope you check out that series. I hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you here on the channel.